What's up guys, on the previous episode, we actually detailed the MC12 Corsa and the car looks amazing. Now on this episode, we're working with a professional photographer and all his cool tools to create the ultimate thumbnail picture for you to sell your car or to post on the wall, it doesn't really matter. But I, the purpose of it was, I wanted to break down the steps so that you and I, meaning non-professional photographers, could do this at home without fancy gear, without fancy equipment, and kind of see the steps, literally step by step, what he's doing to create key amazing pictures that motivate people that bring all this emotion and make them click on the link and hopefully buy the car, whatever it may be. This car, a $3 million car or a $300 car is irrelevant at this point. So this is, our, this is my look behind the scenes and sort of watching everything that he does and I'm sharing it with you guys because I'm pretty excited and I want to do it on my car too. So that and a lot more coming up on this episode of Drive and Protect. Uh, all the way in. So I think, uh, touch on pain off. I can hear it. It goes without saying, but before we get into the steps for creating these lights off or nighttime flare shots, you need to obviously clean the car well, especially the windows and the wheels, which we did a few days ago. Next, move the car to an interesting location, whether it be a city backdrop or a graffiti wall or a parking garage and so on, just make sure the background matches the emotion you're trying to create for the viewer. Because the Maserati is not exactly a daily driver or street legal, we needed to find the best place to shoot indoors at SST for practical reasons. Mike wanted to use the parallel fluorescent bulbs on the ceiling as a focal point and for optimal lighting. Again, have fun with your vision and play with the location the best you can under your circumstances. Now with the car in place, Mike inspects the paint and the surrounding areas for anything that may distract the eye. Because of the soft slicks, it easily collects pebbles and garbage, so a quick wipe down can save you some time in post. Then, a light spray wax to remove any light layer of dust, and we're ready to go. So the vision for this shot is going to be that it's a race car uh, with a backdrop of a speed sport tuning, a race shop, so the environment is appropriate for the shot. We want to make it as easy as possible for the viewer to, or the buyer, really, the potential buyer, to picture themselves in this car racing around the track. You wouldn't be filming this car on a dirt road, you'd save that for a Ford Raptor or something like that. So make sure your environment is appropriate. The next step, once you've set the car and don't move the tripod, your, so your shot's set up, first you're going to leave the lights on and you're going to take a nice base exposure. An exposure is just how long the camera lens is open for. The second shot we're going to do, and we're going to turn the lights off, we're going to turn our ice light on, and we're going to light paint the car in the scene. Everything else is going to be nice and dark. We're going to highlight the car. The last step, we're going to take that ice light and we're going to light the lower end of the car with the lights back on because the bottom of the car is always heavy in shadow. So it's three shots. I live far from here, so I don't want to bring a lot of gear. You don't need a lot of gear. So after we've done taking our third shot, we're just going to go home and combine them all in Photoshop and it's post production. And uh, it's really not complex at all. But uh, at the end, you'll have a nice evenly lit car with a very atmospheric background making the car pop. Speaking of gear, Mike didn't bring a lot and only actually used some of the few things that he did bring. First of course is the camera, which is an older model Nikon 5200, to prove a point that a brand new camera is not necessary. It had a 16 to 80 millimeter lens. He also brought a basic Manfrotto tripod, a polarizer, and an ice light to light bar to create the flare within the shot. He also brought a Lasto light reflector, which he didn't use, and an iPad to double check his work on a larger screen before wrapping for the day. No, this is just a basic Nikon D5200. It's actually six years old. Um, you can, of course, get fancier cameras. This is a crop frame, but overall, uh, it's a misconception. As long as you don't use your cell phone, of course, any DSLR camera can take this shot. The only thing that I would say to spend a little bit of money on is your lens. But if you just get, if you can go to Best Buy and pick up a kit camera for under a thousand dollars with an 18 to 55 millimeter zoom, that's all you need. Okay, with the tripod in place with sandbags or tape, step one is to shoot the car with the overhead lights on in what's called a base exposure. So now that the car is in the right location and it's all set, we're going to do one base exposure so that everything is nice and evenly lit and we could always paint things in or out in post-production. So this particular shot, it's going to be a two second exposure. Uh, your aperture is going to be set to 13, and this is all arbitrary, but the sharper the aperture, the uh, sharper the image, the lower the aperture, the, uh, the more blurry everything in the background will be. In this case, we want everything nice and sharp. 
and the ISO is going to be set to the lowest setting that you can on your camera. In this case, it's 100, but that will reduce the grainy effect that you see on some of the images. The important piece of equipment you want is a polarizer, and it works just like a pair of polarized sunglasses. It reduces reflections on the car. Uh, it's really, really important to do that because you don't want any weird surfaces a car is a giant mirror essentially so you don't want any weird reflections from anything around the car so you'll want to screw this on and uh, you can turn it on the lens itself and as you preview the image you'll see that the reflections change based on how you turn the polarizer so very important they're about 75 dollars depending on the size of the lens but probably the one piece of equipment you can't do with that when you shoot a car Mike then takes the shot, allowing the camera the two-second exposure it needs for the first of three layered shots. As you can see around the edge here, everything's nice and bright, and what that allows us to do later on is go in and paint things in or out, some details as we see fit in post-production. So shot one is done, and now we're going to set the camera up for the light painting shot. The first thing we're going to do is go to the menu, and we're going to set the camera up for a 10-second delay, and that'll just give you enough time once you press the trigger to walk over to the car and start light painting it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a 10 second exposure. So we're raising the exposure up from two seconds to 10 and that'll let more light into the camera. After the camera is all set, you want to shut the lights off so it's nice and dark. And then we're going to use our Westcott Ice Light 2. This is about 500 bucks from any photography store, but it, it doesn't need to be something like this. You could easily use a flashlight or an LED light bar, anything like that that provides enough light so that the car will have uh, no shadows on it. 10 second delay. After the 10 second timer, he focuses on smooth movement with the light cascading downwards, similar angle to where the sun might be, for example. Here's what was created with shot number two. This is from the light bar itself. There's a little blue LED icon light. That's not a uh, problem because we're going to retouch all that stuff out later on. That's what the base exposure is for. So we have nothing to worry about with that stuff. He then repeated shot number two a few times from different angles so he'd have a couple of unique options to play with in Photoshop. Look, I'll show you real quick. What we've done here is light different parts of the car. Okay, and we'll combine all of those when we're all done into one shot so the car is all evenly lit. So for our third and final shot, the lights are back on, and we're actually going to go back here to our first exposure, and you're going to see that on the side of the car is a lot of heavy shadow. So that was shot one, and as we go to our second exposure, different variations, you're going to see that the car is nicely painted, but the sides still have uh, a lot of shadow in them. So now our third exposure is actually going to be for those side vents and those wheels. We're going to set the camera to a 10 second delay and then we're going to use our ice light and with a five second exposure on the camera, we're going to highlight the wheels and the vents. Uh, this is important to capture the little details of the car and it'll be good when we combine all three exposures in Photoshop to make sure the car is nicely lit and evenly painted in the scene. So for the third and final shot, other than the lights being back on again, you need to now lower the exposure from 10 seconds down to five seconds. Remember, the f-stop was constant at 13 for all three shots, and the ISO was constant at 100 for all three shots. The only thing that changed was the exposure of two seconds in shot number one, 10 seconds in shot number two, and back down now to five seconds for shot number three. Again, this may vary on your particular situation, but you get the idea. It's up to you to play with this concept and learn the nuances of the scene and your camera, but it's a good place to start. I'll also have a free downloadable PDF with steps written out for you to try on your own at home. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested. As a final check, Mike loads the photos onto his iPad to check his focus. Now, this is not required, but it's a smart move if you can do it. This is a purely, I guess, anal retentive step, but we're here, we're in the scene. It'll be hard to come back here and reshoot everything, so we want to make sure that it's perfect, in focus, and everything looks good. And to be honest, no matter what camera you have, these screens just aren't very telling. And download the photos to my iPad here, which has a nice big screen with a retina display, and we'll be able to tell if there's any trouble right away, and we could reshoot what we need to reshoot.
Okay, now at this point, I asked Mike if he could walk us through the step-by-step -step process in Photoshop. Now he has a Mac, and of course he has Photoshop, and I wanted to sort of look over his shoulder, so we did a screen share while he was going through and taking the three shots and sort of taking out that white stuff. Plus, uh, you know, he was walking in the shot, so I thought that was crazy. I'm like, how are you gonna take yourself out? He's like, don't worry about it. We can do that in Photoshop. This is that process. So once he's done, and I think it's called masking, uh, and crunching those all down into like one beautiful, amazing shot that you know I posted up before, then you can change the color and the vignettes and the black and white. You know, you can go nuts and go crazy with that. That's not the purpose of this particular uh, tutorial. It's just to go through the steps. But print the uh, the free downloadable PDF. Put it on your desk. Watch his uh, you know screen share and kind of go back and forth. And if you do it once or twice, you can get, oh, okay, cool. I understand the process because again, I, I'm not a Photoshop expert, and I went through once or twice, and now I can sort of replicate this. So let's hop in, watch the screen share, and I think it's going to be helpful. Hi guys, welcome to my computer. Uh, we're going to go ahead and show you how to combine all of our shots into one base exposure, where we'll then be able to edit it however we see fit. So I've gone ahead and renamed these images as Shot One which is our two base exposures, one for the overall scene and one for the lights above the car. Then we have shot two, which is the light painting sequence. And finally, we have shot three, which is for highlights of the wheels. So we're going to go ahead and highlight all those, and we're going to drag them into Photoshop. And you'll see it, opens, it actually opens up in Camera Raw. Uh, normally, we could go in here and we could adjust contrast and clarity, things like that. Uh, I try not to mess with that too much, depending on just how much work the image needs. In this case, we're simply going to select all the images, and we're going to open them. Now, normally doing that would cause all the images to open up in separate tabs. All I've done here is actually gone ahead and combined all of our images into layers. So it's all the shots that we've taken in one Photoshop file. And we're going to start with the light painting sequence. So here, we've got our first shot, and you'll notice that we have some weird lighting effects from our light bar. Now I'm going to bring in our second layer, and you can see a different part of the car is lit, but it also has another weird lighting effect. So to get rid of that, we're going to add a mask to it. So we're going to go down to this menu here, and we're going to add this mask. We're then going to choose our eraser tool, and we're going to eh, give the the brush uh, a bigger stroke here and finally we're going to just kind of brush it away now why a mask and why not an eraser tool because a mask will let you go back you can just flip them with the black and white here and paint back in something that you may want to add back in so masks for here are very important but you'll also notice that we've kind of erased that part of the car, which was nicely lit. So using our brush tool again, we're simply going to erase this part of that layer and bring back in the car. Now, what this is actually doing is, it's like a window letting you see to the layer below. So here we've got our first layer with our, our nicely lit side of the car. And then we're adding another layer on top and erasing a part, that, that part away. So now we're actually showing two shots. And I've gone ahead and brought in the other shots here with masks. So you can see we're actually going to paint in the same car. So by masking different parts, we're highlighting different parts of the car. Now, for our wheels, we're going to bring in our wheel exposures, which is shot three. And if I go in here, I can actually disable this mask, and you'll see it's the entire shot with even our light bar in the scene. Now, it's not a big deal when you're on location. Don't worry about any of this stuff because, as you can see, it's easy to paint it out. So we'll actually get rid of the entire thing and just highlight the part that we want to use on the image. The next sh sh shot is the base exposure. And if you look, we'll bring this all the way up to about 100 and you can see that it's the entire garage scene nicely lit, but we don't actually want that. We just want enough to give the car some atmosphere. So we're going to bring that down to about 20%. And then finally, we have an exposure for these lights in the shop above the car, 
which I think is important because you need to give the the car some light source. You don't want it to look like it's being lit from some magical place. Uh, finally, we're going to add a curve here. And a curve is just an adjustment. So you go to your Adjustments tab, and you can click on the Curves tool. And that will open up this. And that just simply adjusts the overall um, brightness of the image itself, uh, the tone of the shadows, and things like that. And you can see the difference before and after. So now that we've got our shots combined, we're going to select all of them. And we're going to group them by doing Command-G. We're going to, going to duplicate this group. So moving it down here, we duplicate it. And I always like to duplicate it because if I ever need to go back to these original images at all, I always have them and I can always manipulate them. Finally, we're going to hit Command-E and that's going to flatten all those layers into one layer. And suddenly we have a well-lit car in a scene. Now all of the other groups that you see here are just my own edits for color tone, mood, things like that. And that's to help set the car in the scene and to give it the unique look that, that we have for it. But if you go back to the original here, you'll see that we've got the basics already set up, which is the car nicely lit in the scene itself. If you guys have any questions, you can always reach out to me. And uh, thanks for watching. Well guys, there you have it. That is the step-by-step -step process for creating the night flare shot. When you're done, it looks absolutely phenomenal. Uh, huge thank you to Mike for sort of letting us into his world and showing us the secret sauce of, as to how to create that. Uh, that's very cool, so I appreciate that. Um, lastly, if you have any questions for him about Photoshop or you know the ice light thing and moving and doing all the crazy things that he did, uh, I put his info in the description. He's a really sweet guy. Um, send him an email and I'm sure he'll help you out. As always guys, thanks so much for watching and I hope it inspires you to get out there, detail your car, take a photograph, throw it up on your wall and uh, enjoy staring at your car when you're not actually driving it. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.